SpaceX never fails to surprise us, and just when it felt like 2025 was already their best year ever, they surprised everyone again by breaking records. Not just one record, but two major records in the launch industry. In this video, we're going to break down exactly what those records are and why they matter. Before we dive any deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more updates like this. We are all used to SpaceX doing groundbreaking things. Because just when you think they can't surprise anyone anymore, they come up with something that completely resets expectations. To understand why SpaceX's achievements in 2025 matter so much, you first have to understand how spaceflight worked before SpaceX entered the picture. Before SpaceX, launching rockets was slow, rare, and extremely expensive. A single rocket launch could take years of development, testing, and planning. Entire national space agencies would celebrate just one or two successful launches per year. Even the most experienced launch providers in the world rarely exceeded 10 launches annually. For example, before SpaceX, the record for the most launches by a single company in one year was held by Russia's Proton and Soyuz programs during the Cold War era. At their peak, the Soviet Union managed around 60 to 65 launches per year, but this was spread across multiple rocket families and backed by an entire state-run industrial system. No private company had ever come close to that number. And there was another major problem. Every one of those rockets was single-use. Once a rocket launched, that was it. The booster would either burn up in the atmosphere or crash into the ocean. That meant engineers had to design, manufacture, test, and assemble an entirely new rocket for every single mission. Imagine building a brand new commercial airplane, flying it once and throwing it away after landing. That was the standard model for spaceflight for more than 50 years. This made launches extremely expensive and take NASA's space shuttle program. While technically reusable, the shuttle required massive refurbishment after every flight. The average cost per launch was around $450 million, and when adjusted for full program costs, some estimates place it closer to $1.5 billion per mission. Even fully expendable rockets were incredibly costly. The Saturn V, which took humans to the moon, cost roughly $185 million per launch in 1969, which is over $1.2 billion per launch in today's dollars. In the commercial market, rockets like Ariane 5 typically cost between $150 million and $220 million per launch. Russia's Proton rocket cost around $65 to $90 million. This was the reality of spaceflight before SpaceX. Then SpaceX changed the entire model. Instead of accepting that rockets had to be disposable, SpaceX asked a simple question. Why are we throwing away the most expensive part of the rocket? That expensive part was the first stage booster. The engines, fuel tanks, avionics, and structural components all made up the majority of the rocket's cost. SpaceX estimated that the first stage alone accounted for roughly 70% of the total vehicle cost. If that part could be recovered and reused, launch costs could drop dramatically. This idea was not entirely new. Engineers had discussed reusability for decades, but no one had actually made it work in an operational, repeatable way. Most experts believed that landing a rocket vertically after orbital flight was either impractical or too expensive. SpaceX decided to try anyway. The result was Falcon 9. Falcon 9 was designed from the beginning with reusability in mind. After separating from the second stage, the booster performs a boost-back burn, re-enters the atmosphere, and lands either on a drone ship at sea or on a landing pad on land. This requires precise guidance and durability that no previous orbital rocket had demonstrated. In December 2015, SpaceX successfully landed an orbital-class booster for the first time. That moment alone changed spaceflight history. But landing once was not the real goal. Reusing boosters repeatedly was. Fast forward to 2025, and SpaceX has not only proven that, they have normalized it. As of 2025, several Falcon 9 boosters have flown more than 25 times each. Yes, you heard that right. By the end of 2025, the total number of Falcon 9 booster reuses has exceeded 300 reflights, meaning SpaceX has reused first stages more than 300 times. 
instead of building new ones. The manufacturing cost of a new Falcon 9 first stage at roughly 30 to 35 million dollars. So, if each new booster costs approximately $30 million, that represents around $9 billion worth of hardware that did not need to be rebuilt. The money saved by not rebuilding boosters does not just reduce costs on paper. It directly funds additional launches. At a listed Falcon 9 launch price of about $67 million, the savings from booster reuse alone are enough to pay for dozens of additional Falcon 9 missions. For example, if booster reuse saves even $20 million per launch compared to an expendable rocket, then across 300 reused flights, that is $6 billion in avoided costs. That amount of money could fund nearly 90 additional Falcon 9 launches. No other orbital rocket in history comes close to this number. For comparison, the space shuttle orbiters typically flew 5 to 10 missions per year at most, with months of refurbishment between flights. Falcon 9 boosters can now fly again in as little as a few weeks. This directly impacts launch costs. The price for a Falcon 9 launch is around $67 million. However, analysts estimate that the internal cost to SpaceX for a reused Falcon 9 launch may be under $30 million, and possibly closer to $20 million in some cases. SpaceX is not just making the launches cheaper, they are breaking records after records. Only recently, they broke two major records in the launch industry in 2025. The first record is the total number of orbital launches in a single year. In 2024, SpaceX completed 140 orbital launches, already the highest number ever achieved by any launch provider in history. In 2025, they went even further. By mid-December 2025, SpaceX had already exceeded that number, crossing 150 launches in a single year, with additional missions still scheduled before the year ended. No government space program and no private company has ever launched rockets at this scale in one calendar year. To understand how extreme this is, during the peak of the Cold War, the Soviet Union managed around 60 to 65 orbital launches per year, and that was spread across multiple rocket families and supported by an entire centrally planned economy. The United States typically launched far fewer, often below 30 per year. Even in the modern commercial era before SpaceX, most launch providers averaged fewer than 10 launches annually. SpaceX more than doubled the highest historical national launch rate and did it as a single company. What makes this record even more significant is that the vast majority of these launches were performed using reused Falcon 9 boosters. Instead of manufacturing 150 new rockets, SpaceX reused a relatively small fleet of boosters many times. Several Falcon 9 first stages in 2025 had already flown more than 20 missions. The second record SpaceX broke in 2025 was related to how fast they can launch rockets from the same launch pad. On December 11, 2025, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 carrying 29 Starlink satellites from Cape Canaveral. This mission set a new record for the shortest time between two Falcon 9 launches from the same pad, with a turnaround time of 2 days, 2 hours, 44 minutes, and 55 seconds. This broke their own previous record, which had been set just weeks earlier. A turnaround of roughly 2.1 days per launch means that, in theory, a single launch pad operating continuously at this tempo could support around 170 to 175 launches per year. This matters because launch pads have historically been a major bottleneck in spaceflight. Before SpaceX, pads often required weeks or months between launches due to infrastructure inspections. Vehicles like Atlas V, Delta IV, and Ariane V rarely launched more than once per month from the same pad. SpaceX reducing that turnaround to just over two days shows that both the rocket and the ground systems are operating more like an airline model than a traditional space program. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.